I'm Shelby Hesse from Washington High School. And I'm Indigo Bradford from Raleigh High School. And this is your November edition of the SPS TV News Magazine. So Thanksgiving is this month, and one thing we can all be thankful for is the fact that election season is finally over. However, the staff of SPS TV was curious to hear people's thoughts on the outcome of this election. SBS Television CJ Garber has the story. The 45th President of the United States has finally been elected. From angry protests to the assassination attempt in Reno, Nevada, there is no doubt that the 2016 presidential election was the most grueling election in U.S. history. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump both ran contentious campaigns, but in a surprising turn of events, Trump came on top and won. In one of the biggest upsets ever in presidential elections, it was expected that Hillary would win. But as time progressed, Trump prevailed. I think the fact that he won was a surprise because it seemed that Hillary Clinton had this in the bag. It could have been so much better. I thought Hillary was going to win. A week after the election, the final results are finally in. As we all know, Trump won the presidency with 290 electoral votes over Clinton's 232. However, did you know that Hillary Clinton won the popular election by over a million votes? According to the CNN exit polls, women seem to prefer Clinton while men overall voted for Trump. It is estimated that all people ages 18 through 44 tended to vote for Clinton. Voters 45 years of age and up preferred Donald Trump. Sadly, almost 50% of Americans eligible to vote did not. I'm CJ Garber reporting SBS TV News. So the choice for the president wasn't the only selection on the ballot. The South Bend Community School Board had three positions up for election. Two incumbents fought to retain their board seats. Marissa Robles and John Anello won re-election for the two at-large seats, defeating six challengers. Robles was pleased with her victory and stated, I feel very blessed and very thankful to the voters. Anello has been on the South Bend School Board since 2014. He was also satisfied with the news of his election, stating, It's great. We have a new superintendent and we have a momentum. The race for the District 3 seat was very close. Leslie Wesley defeated the incumbent Bill Snydecki by only 46 votes. The United States Marine Corps celebrated its 241st birthday this past week. As Marines across the nation gathered to celebrate this event, here at Riley, the Marine Corps' JROTC gathered to celebrate and discuss the reasons why they wanted to join the JROTC. I was seeking to do ROTC in college and I thought this would be a good prerequisite. Uh, I thought it would pr prepare me by helping me become a better leader and just prepare me for um, post-high school uh, adventures, whatever that may entail. Well, I decided to join ROTC because my dad was enlisted in the Navy for four years, and ever since I was about in sixth grade, I wanted to join the Marines. November is also a month we celebrate Veterans Day. We have celebrated it since 1919 to remember the lives lost in World War I. From all of us here at SBS TV, we thank you for your service. Did you know that the South city of South Bend has its own flag? This news is surprising to many, despite the fact that the flag was unveiled this past March. This is the official exclamation point on SB 150. We spent a whole year celebrating our city's birthday, our past, present, and future. Now we have a new symbol to rally around as a city, and I think it helps unify us, and it's going to help us physically identify our love for this community. Every year, the South Bend Community School Corporation honors a teacher from every school as Teacher of the Year. This year's nominees at the high school level were Jessica Baker from Washington, Yonika Willis from Clay, Cassandra Castor from Adams, and Seth Ponder from Riley. And now we go to Abby Crothers reporting from the Century Center to tell us about the Magnet Fair. We are at the South Bend Community Schools Magnet Fair and students and parents all around the city are getting a great feel for the opportunities available for their children. I think it's good for our families to see what we offer in the South Bend School Corporation. We have a great turnout. It's an amazing program. It just shows the people what we have to offer. The Magnet Fair is really important because high school sets you up for the future, and so choosing the right high school is going to set you up for whatever you want to do in the future. So if you want a more technical background, it's important to choose a high school that gives a technical program or something that's more in the social sciences. You go to a high school that is more social science STEM. However, the Magnet Fair offers opportunities for middle and grade school students as well as high schoolers. At our school, we, uh, we do a bunch of stuff about environmental. It's one of our electives. So we get to go outside on our trails and we've got chickens, so sometimes we help with those. I think programs like these are important because not every student knows what they do in the high school. And like every single high school focuses on a certain thing. So if they know, if like they come to programs like this, 
and the focus is probably like arts, like play and stuff, like they get to know what they want to do in the future and the high school can help them out with it. So like if someone wanted to go to the medical school but like all their friends were going to Adams, they wouldn't know that they could have a chance to get ahead in what they want to do later in life. So I wish there was something I could have came to to help me make my decision. Reporting with SBS TV, I'm Abby Crothers. The Riley High School Engineering Program puzzled its freshman engineering students with the Puzzle Cube Challenge as a form of pre-development studies. Students went through the entire process from sketching on paper to creating the prototype. The final and most fun step was to time the students completing different puzzle cubes to see who had the most challenging one. The Teenage Homeless and Runaway Prevention Month is this November the purpose of giving a voice to those who may not want to speak out about being homeless. The Youth Service Bureau was created on the mission to giving aid to homeless teens across the South Bend area who may be faced with the difficulties of speaking out to fellow peers. YSB has set up many locations with the mission to prevent teenagers from being homeless. It's estimated that 18% of teens attending school in South Bend are homeless. According to the Youth Service Bureau, out of those 18%, only one-third of them seek help. YSB makes it an annual mission to help teens who face this problem. What's good about having a Youth Homelessness Awareness and Runaway Prevention Month is that it's an opportunity for us to share stories of young people who have come to us um, to share stories about the statistics because a lot of people don't realize that. And also to tell kids that it's okay to ask for help and that they're not alone. Well, we actually have a surprising number of young people who are homeless within uh, St. Joseph County. We estimate that number to be between 1,500 and 1,000 students who are homeless at some point during the year. And that can mean that they're literally on the street or that can mean they're couch surfing or just in an unsafe environment. YSB has an emergency youth shelter at 1322 Lincoln Way East. And you can also connect with immediate help. So if you're at a store or a fire station and you've seen the yellow safe place signs or the libraries, there's all kinds of places and you can go into any of those sites and let them know that you need some help and they will contact the shelter 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's it for the news section this month. I'm Shelby Hesse. And I'm Indigo Bradford. Stay tuned for the entertainment section. We hope you have a great Thanksgiving and enjoy your break. Hello, I'm Santana Piedra from Riley High School. This is the entertainment section of our show. Thanksgiving is right around the corner. People are getting ready for their Thanksgiving traditions. Most usually travel to be with family and enjoy good food. Mostly just spending time with family. Basically, all day we just visit like family members. My, my whole family gets together and we just have a fun time and uh, eat. Usually on Thanksgiving, we meet up at my aunt's house and we eat a lot of food. We always go to my grandma's, everyone in my family does. And Eat your time we eat like four Thanksgiving dinners and smash on food. Usually we go around the table and say what we're thankful for. Another Thanksgiving tradition after a big meal is family movie time. Here's a list of the top five popular Thanksgiving movies according to American movie classics. Or some cranberry sauce, which is easy. Just open the can. That's not gonna get us a ride. This is pathetic. <laughs> Try it! Would you spot weld this, Mom? This is not him, is it? Gee, I hope not. There wasn't a lot of change among the top five music this month, but there was a bit of movement in the Billboard charts. I know I can treat you better than he can. We all love the Christmas and Thanksgiving holiday, but when exactly is the best time to enjoy the holiday with the traditional music? There is not a specific date on when you should transition from Thanksgiving music to Christmas music because if you like Christmas music or Thanksgiving music, 
you should be able to listen to it whenever you feel like it. We've asked a couple students when they felt was necessary to transition into Christmas music from Thanksgiving. December 22nd, so you can be ready for the film. The appropriate time to listen to Christmas music is the day before Christmas or on Christmas. When you're drinking some eggnog, this is Kodak, and your girl over there in a snuggie. On a Thursday, um, when you like eating graham crackers, I mean gingerbread cookies, and like putting the lights on your Christmas tree. Any time, any, anywhere, any day, any moment, any second. Hi guys, welcome back to another Word of the Month. You should know who we are, but just in case you don't, hi, I'm Nina. And I'm Shelby. This Word of the Month is Annex. Can you guess what it means? Well, let's find out. Sounds like some type of disease. Some type of medicine. Some kind of drug or something. Yeah, some type of medicine. I nice mean, to be like attached to something. I have no idea. Like a drug, like a pill people take. Stuck with something. Like drugs and alcohol. Wow, some of you are right, but others not so much. Annex means to attach to something. Shelby, they know what it means. Now let's go. Just kidding. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Oh, and word of the month. Bye, guys. <laughs> With the holidays coming up, you can expect many program and concert tickets being sold. Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, the musical, will be performed on November 26th at the Morris Performing Arts Center. The Morris will also be selling tickets for the Mannheim Steamroller Christmas that will be performed on November 29th. The classic Christmas ballet, The Nutcracker, will be presented by the Southwell Dance Theater at the Morris on December 10th. The South Bend Civic Theater will be showing its A Wonderful Life from December 2nd to December 23rd. Be sure to get your tickets for these holiday productions before it's too late. So far, 2016 has been a very exciting time for music lovers, with albums like The Life of Pablo, This Is Acting, and Coloring Book being released. Although this year is coming to an end, we still have so much more to look forward to. Next week, The Weeknd will be releasing his seventh album, Starboy. Soon after, on November 25th, Childish Gambino will be releasing his album, Awaken My Love. Although his album Views had already dropped earlier this year, Drake is releasing another album called More Life in December. Finally, Lin-Manuel Miranda's highly anticipated Hamilton mixtape will be released December 2nd. You can expect artists such as Kelly Clarkson, The Roots, Chance the Rapper, Sia, and for some reason, Jimmy Fallon on his mixtape. Many are upset about Trump being elected president of the United States. Even celebrities are expressing their feelings about the election. And I do want to say that I've been very vocal for my support for everyone besides Donald Trump. Comedian and actor Will Arnett tweeted, How do we explain this to future generations of women and minorities? Hashtag, we should be ashamed of ourselves. Actor Mark Ruffalo also took to Twitter saying, You know what we do now? We finish building what we started and we fight back. Lift your heads up, brothers and sisters. Lady Gaga even held a protest at the Trump Towers in New York City. She also posted a picture on Twitter and wrote, I want to live in a country of kindness. Love Trump's hate. He divided us so carelessly. Needless to say, many celebrities are upset about the 2016 presidential election. We'd like to introduce a new segment called Hallway Thoughts, where each month we follow one student to hear what they have to say. This month's is Dylan Rankin. We gotta find this out. We're gonna do some investigative journalism here. Really like walk and chew bubble gum. You're asking me to walk and talk and chew bubble gum? I don't have any bubble gum. Do you have any gum? I wish I had some gum, dude. Go to the English room, dude. We gotta get us some English education. My dad often tells me never to be like him. I'm like, Dad, what's wrong with being you? And he goes, I don't have any talent. Well, apparently talent is hereditary because I don't got none either. I'm not good at much or anything. You know, let's go say hi to Mr. Berg. Mr. Berg, how do you feel today in particular? How do you feel about Arby's? About Arby's? Yeah, like the fast food restaurant. It's okay, I'm a big fan of curly fries. Uh, but, um, you know, usually I'm on a low carb diet, so uh, give me some chicken wings with no bread in on it, and I'm, I'm good all day. Chicken wings? Well, Arby's doesn't have that, which no, makes no. me think we could do that. Did you work at Arby's? Yeah, I, now I have a job. Oh my god, I gotta get the class. You're putting a what together? Segment of Dylan Reagan? That sounds absolutely terrible. That wraps up our entertainment portion of the show. Stick around to find out what is going on in sports.
Hi, I'm Kyler Beatty alongside Ernesto Bueno for your second edition of SBS TV Sports. Indiana High School basketball season is here. Area teams begin play next week. The South Bend Riley Wildcats return a veteran team. Expectations are high for the Wildcats who have won back-to-back -back sectional titles. It's no different than what it's ever been. We want to be able to improve every single time we step out on the floor from day one until we play in the tournament. It's, you know, you have five out on the floor, but it's just not the five. It's the other five that you have sitting on the bench as well. And so whatever your role is, whatever your job is, you're expected to do it to the very best of your ability. So that's what team is. You come together as one. You do all to the very best of your ability. Well, our first game, it will be Tuesday after Thanksgiving at home versus Michigan City. Flying high are the Adams Eagles. You can expect the same high intensity defense with a wide open offense. The Eagles face Carroll High School to look for a win that would make Adams a contender to look out for at the conference games. Ready to face the Chargers this Wednesday, Adams is searching for the win in their first game in a much anticipated matchup. Their fate will be determined as both teams root for the win at the start of the season. Looking to be vowed victors at the opening games of the season, Clay High School is determined to claim the winning title to return with a hopeful victory on Saturday, December 3rd against Portage and ignite the school spirit for the start of the basketball season. Clay High sets out to take its first win in the mission of making it past the conference game. South Bend basketball is just at the start of a long journey towards victory in the postseason. The Riley's girls basketball team has already had two wins this season. But what may be more impressive for Ernesto is that they almost beat the area powerhouse Washington last Friday night. They lost by only one point. Unfortunately, they lost to Laporte on Saturday as well. But look for Coach Robles to have this Riley girls team more competitive. Now let's take a moment to congratulate all the South Bend and Cost Country runners who made it to semi-state this fall. The Riley boys team took on their fourth semi-state championship in five years, while the Adams girls made it there as a team for the first time in school history. Washington High School senior David Conter also qualified for a spot at semi-state this year. Congratulations to all the South Bend runners on their fantastic seasons. In college football, Notre Dame ended their home season last Saturday against Virginia Tech. While I was on the line for this game, despite not having the season the Irish looked for, Notre Dame was still hanging on to a possible bowl game. Plus, these Notre Dame seniors would try to get a win for their last time playing at South Bend. The Fighting Irish started this game hot with their opening drive leading to a touchdown. Notre Dame had a 10 point lead at half, but second half Notre Dame is something that's been a problem all year long. Virginia Tech and Notre Dame got their own touchdown in the third quarter, but fourth is where everything went wrong for the Irish. Virginia Tech rallied scoring a touchdown and two field goals, pulling them in front of the Irish in the fourth quarter. Irish threw an incomplete pass on the last play of the game, but a flag was thrown, looking like Notre Dame might just get a second chance. The ref announced this. Attention on the offense, number six. When out of bounds was the first to touch it. That is the climb. Ball game. A devastating second half for the Irish led to Notre Dame seniors ending their home game season with a loss and confirm that the next game will be their last. We kick things off with OSU versus Maryland. There isn't too much to say about this one, besides saying that OSU just blew Maryland out of the water. OSU held the Terrapins to a simple field goal in the first quarter. OSU scored a whopping 45 points in the first half alone, then eased up on the gas a little bit in the second half, scoring 17 points. Now we'll check out the Badgers and the Illini. This game was also not very close at all. Wisconsin smashed Illinois. Wisconsin scored 31 points in the first half while leaving Illinois to three points the entire game. Number seven, Wisconsin finished off the fighting line eye with the score of 43 to three. Michigan State looked like a whole new team in this game despite the Spartans three and seven overall record and a bowl eligibility chance shattered, they still seemed very motivated. Spartans gave the Rutgers a beating keeping them completely scoreless the entire game. Spartans looked different Saturday, and the fans loved it. Michigan State beats Rutgers 49-0. We'll take it down to Bloomington, where Indiana Hoosiers hosted Penn State. IU had the lead or remained tied most of the game, where it looks like the Hoosiers might just pull off an upset, but it isn't over till it's over. Penn State went into the fourth quarter trailing 24-21, but the Lions wouldn't let up. 
Penn State Saquon Barkley went on to score two go-ahead running touchdowns, which helped Penn State pull off their clutch win over the Hoosiers. Final score was 45-31. to Now things start getting a little crazy with Iowa versus Michigan. In the second quarter, Michigan gets a touchdown to give the lead 10-0. But Hawkeyes came to play. After a failed drive, Iowa had the punt and downed it at the Michigan two-yard line. This led to a safety, which gave Iowa two points in the ball back. Iowa drove down the field and on the next drive, went for it on fourth and goal. It paid off and gave Iowa six points, but a failed two-point conversion. Michigan led 10-8 going into the second half. Iowa was set to kick off, and they did. But a big play by Iowa special teams forced a fumble on the kickoff and gave Iowa the ball back. Iowa scored a field goal in the third, which pulled them ahead 11-10. Michigan went on to do the same and pulled the score to 13-11. Iowa then started working down the field slowly but with gain until C.J. Beathard threw an interception to Chanik Stribling at the Michigan 16-yard line with a little time remaining. True freshman kicker Keith Duncan came on to kick the game-winning field goal, and he did just that. Hawkeye fans stormed the field as Iowa pulls off their clutch and very needed win. Final score was 14-13. to The college football playoff is about to begin its third year running. With the first and second year champions not too far away from punching their ticket into this year's playoff, we're still wondering who a third champion will be. Right now, any ranked team is still in contention for the college football playoff race. The top four teams right now stand at Alabama, Ohio State, Michigan, and Clemson. But these could easily change within the next two weeks with conference champions coming up and possible upsets to come. Following behind the top four are Louisville, Washington, Wisconsin, Penn State, Oklahoma and Colorado. We went around and asked the people of Riley High School who they think the final playoff teams will be this year. It's going to be Alabama and uh, Louisville going to be in there because Lamar Jackson is too hot. He's too good. 46 touchdowns this year. He just, I mean, that's like a taller, slimmer Michael Vick. Michigan might sneak in there. And uh, probably, maybe Clemson. Clemson is. Clemson kind of nice, but they, they should have lost to Louisville, but they kind of nice. Obviously, Alabama. I'm going to go with Louisville. I'm going to go with Ohio State. And I'm going to go with Michigan, too. I'm going to probably have to choose Alabama, Louisville, Michigan, Clemson. Uh, Alabama, without a doubt. And, then, you know, uh, I'll put Ohio State in there. Um, I think uh, Clemson has a chance. And I go with uh, uh, Michigan. So, Ernesto, who do you think makes the college football playoff? I'll stick with Alabama, but I'm rooting for Ohio State. Should be a great playoff. That's it for sports. But before we go, we want to go back to our Magnet Fair coverage, where we sent a very interested reporter searching for what else? Magnets. <laughs> Hey guys, Steve from WETO here. So I'm here at the Century Center as there's supposed to be this magnet fair. And you know, me being a magnet enthusiast, I just wanted to check out what's all this fuss about magnet fair or whatever. I'm gonna go check out, see what kind of magnets I can see. Let's go. Okay, so we're here at a magnet fair, so I'm wondering, uh, where are the magnets? Pardon? <laughs> the magnets? Yeah, where are the magnets? I'm sure you can find some here somewhere. One is in Miss Harding's pocket that messed up your technology earlier. I guess the magnets are what lure all these people here. Uh, Riley High School. No, 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 no. Like, oh. magnets, the ones that stick, you know? Like so, uh, the magnets are probably somewhere caught in the budget. I think I saw some on a wall over there. I can give you a sticker. My, uh, you know, name tag. There's a magnet on the back and a magnet on the front. Most of our classrooms, you can find magnets. Maybe we'll get some magnets for next year. Actually, they're all over the place because whatever you feel like you want to uh, to go to school, where you feel like really you have a passion for, 
that's where you attract it. That's a good response, good response. Uh, not, not what I was looking for, but... The magnets are kind of like a school within a school. Yeah, I, I was talking more as in like the magnet that sticks. I was like, I'm looking for magnets, you know? I'm oh, magnet you're looking for those again. magnets? Okay, so yeah. here I just blabbed on all about that and everything. Um, I hear that they should be passing them out in the front. Okay, nice. <laughs> I'm going to get some. Good luck. Thank you. You're welcome. You know, I came here looking for magnets, you know, I'm Steve, the magnet enthusiast, enthusiast, but Saturday I wasn't able to find any, so I mean, I guess, I don't know, man, I'm probably just going to go to sleep or something, because I've just, I wanted magnets, I've got zero magnets, I found one, one, the, one of the Riley ladies, she had, she had one, but like, she wouldn't let me have it, because I had her name on it, so then she was all like, she's like, no, it's mine, and I was like, oh, okay, no magnets, so yeah, I uh, hope all of y'all have a good night, and yeah, I'm just going to go cry to sleep.